My name is Don Stroud. I'm from Fairborn, Ohio, and was one of the pilots on the Wright B Project. That is awesome. I also helped in the machine shop, making metal parts to hold the wooden structure together. What a day, what an airplane. This home video was shot on October 29th, 2005, when we made the first flights in this airplane. After the airplane has started, you see me in the aircraft as I begin to roll forward. You'll see I have a couple of helpers on the wingtips to guide me to the takeoff position down the grass runway. This is because the airplane has no brakes. The wheels and the skids cannot be turned. Our replica maintained the Wright Brothers wing warping system for lateral control. The Wright Brothers had one stick each for wing warping and elevator with a hand toggle for the rudder. But we developed more modern controls, a single stick control for the wing warping and elevator, with a foot bar for the rudder. Another difference is that our engine, a Model A Ford, had a hand throttle instead of a foot controlled spark adjuster. <laughs> the initial takeoff roll on this aircraft was quite long because I added only a little bit of power at the beginning of the roll to get a feel for its directional control. The rudder is small compared to modern aircraft, but I was pleasantly surprised. After a short distance, I was able to make slight corrections in the takeoff roll. Everything felt good, so I increased power and felt the wings getting yeah. lighter and lighter. We got airborne yeah, just one sure or two is. feet. I soon reduced power and landed. The flight was short, because this stage we only wanted to prove that the airplane would fly. Our goal was to build up the flights one step at a time. A second flight was up to 10 to 12 feet and a little bit longer distance. This is the third flight, Come on, which was a culmination of the day. There we go. There we are. Yeah. One of the things we learned was the elevator control is quite sensitive, and you actually need some forward pressure on the stick soon after takeoff. I got about 20 to 25 feet high and flew almost Beautiful. the whole length of the runway. Yeah! The second series of flights were also made at New Carlisle. We wanted to test what I considered the somewhat stiff control of the wing warping. We found in these flights that there was some delay in the wing warping response after the control input, especially at the load speeds right after takeoff. This led to some over control in the opposite direction as you can see. These were very instructive flights leading into our last series, which would attempt circuits around the field. The last set of flights we called the long flights. We wanted to convince ourselves the wing warping was safe. We moved the airplane to a much safer place. We had two 4,000 foot grass runways that were parallel. I made a safe takeoff finding again that forward pressure was required to keep the airplane from climbing at too high an attitude. I got to about 150, 200 feet flying down the runway. I made a 180 degree left turn to downwind. The lateral input was very smooth. Much less pressure was needed and we concluded this was due to the increased airspeed over the control surfaces. The bank angle was fairly easily maintained and the rollout was the same as the initial turn. Without instruments, it's easy to judge airspeed by the feel of the wind against your face and the sounds of the engine. 
and the feel of the control. I made two circuits around the airfield in six and a half minutes and landed on one of the grass strips. Especially during this last flight, we got a good taste of how our early aviators took to the air. I feel so honored to be able to take a step back in time to experience what they went through to learn how to fly. Thank you.